Welcome to Reflector Hub TV. Get set for an encounter through God's Word with God's servant, Apostle Joshua Selman. Amen. Please pay attention. Those following online, pay attention. If you know someone who belongs to these categories, even if not you, please pay attention for their sake. Hallelujah. There are not many things that can discourage a Christian. Please listen carefully. Um, but the few things that can discourage a Christian when they are there and they remain, the effect of their presence can be disastrous. I have identified two major um, issues, if I would say, that discourage Christians. Number one is on answered prayer. There's almost nothing more frustrating to a believer who genuinely loves God as a tragedy of unanswered prayer. That people lift up their voice to heaven believing that God is alike, releasing all their faith as much as they know, and then not getting the answer that should be. Number two is an unfruitful Christian life an unfruitful Christian life. That means that when your life with time is void of certain evidences that should be testaments of your service, your work to, for God. It's very, very frustrating when a believer gets born again and opens up his heart, serving the Lord, giving his best, and then with time cannot see um, the evidences, there are evidences, testaments that help us and help believers around us to appreciate the hand of God upon our lives. So, unanswered prayers and then an unfruitful Christian life. Now, write this down, please. There is a goal. Let me start with those who are severely being attacked by the gate of hell. There is a goal, there is an object behind every attack of Satan. Listen carefully. That every time hell launches an attack on an individual, on a ministry, on a family, on a couple, there is something behind the thinking of the devil and his cohorts. And the Bible did not leave us in the dark as to what Satan is really looking for. And if you do not understand, then you will continually be defeated by all of the, the attacks of Satan. The first goal behind every attack, the first thing the devil seeks to achieve is to destroy your confidence in God. And the integrity of his word. Please never forget this. That every time the devil attempts to attack a believer. He is attempting to attack your confidence in God. And the integrity of his word. What Satan is really attacking is the integrity of God's word. What Satan is attacking is your confidence in God. The Bible says to cast not away your confidence. Why? Because it has a great recompense of reward. Are we together? Your confidence in God. I don't know if I've shared it here, but I remember I was in Joss for a meeting when I met a gentleman who was talking to me about his dad. And he told me his dad was once a reverend in one of these great denominations around and having been frustrated repeatedly in the field the man not only turned away from God he made up his mind that he was going to move to another faith entirely he was so frustrated no school fees for his children no meaning for his life nothing seemed to work and he said look I've served this God I've preached about this God but I'm going to have to stop lying to myself it does not work you will think that you may never get to a point where you can consider this. Let me tell you something. Life has a way of pushing a man, 
a family an individual to a point where you will doubt the reality of God? Was it not John the Baptist under pressure who said, go and ask him if he's the Messiah or should we expect another? For John to be thinking of another as the person who ordained Jesus, he should tell you what situations and circumstances can do. Are we together? So your confidence in God and the integrity of his word. Number two, the goal of every attack is to introduce the spirit of fear. This subject of fear is very, very, very important. You will be amazed at how many believers have been utterly destroyed because they became the victims of fear. The Bible says the righteous are as bold as a lion. There is a reason why he says that. Fear all their lifetime be subject to bondage. Praise the Lord. Fear. Believers live in fear. Fear of the unknown. Fear of this and that and that and that. Today you see young people, even teenagers, having high blood pressure. This is something that a teenager should have no business with ordinarily. But fear, fear, fear of the future. How will tomorrow be? How will this happen? How will that happen? And that fear creates a lot of worry. Matthew chapter 6. Jesus took out time to teach and explain again and again on the fruitlessness of worry. He said, which of you by worrying can add even a cubit to his hair? He said, consider the lilies of the valley. Consider the birds of the air. They break a fundamental law of sowing and reaping. Yet your father, your heavenly father, is benevolent enough to make sure they are not hungry. Please listen very carefully. Sooner or later in your Christian experience, hell will be interested in you. I guarantee you, except you do not love the Lord and you do not keep growing. A time will come when the impact that you continue to make will attract the attention of hell. Who is this young man who wants to rise and do what has never been done in this family? For as long as you remain down, that's alright. But then you, you it's, like a, it's like a spiritual thermometer. There is a level when you rise to, you attract the attention of hell. And they say, what is going on here? If we are Allow this young Moses, he can tomorrow be the deliverer. Do not take the baby for granted. Kill him while he's a baby. Don't allow him to grow. The potentials of his growth can be dangerous. And so discouragement comes. Discouragement. So many believers, listen. So many families have had, especially in this time that we live in, they are faith shaken, discouraged, students are discouraged, workers discouraged, graduates discouraged, pastors discouraged, church members. You know, it looks like there is this air of discouragement and depression. When you say praise the Lord, people cannot say hallelujah. In their minds they say for what? Hallelujah comes from the word halal Yeshua. Pray the one who saves. That's what it means. You say, where is the salvation that I should praise him? Talk to an average believer about God. He will prefer you talking about rapture than talking about the faithfulness of God. Don't mention that word faithful to him. Because he tells you, I don't know what you are talking about. That reality is foreign to my experience. I do not yet know God as faithful. Faithful means keeping to your word. Faithful means justifying your integrity at all times. Please listen very carefully. So believers have been attacked here and there. And they think that the attack, listen, they think the attack is just on them, just because they are Christians, or just because the devil does not want them to have a job, or have a child, and so on and so forth. Listen, the devil is looking more than you. He's, he's trying to use you. To make a statement to God that you are not faithful. So when you read scriptures like, since I was young, and now I am old. He says, I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed beg for bread. And you think of all your family members in light of this. He said, but this is a lie. 
This is not true. Foreign to my experience. And when the devil wants to make the statement stronger, he will handpick serious believers. He knows the impact. Listen, the discouragement of a serious believer has more impact than that of a believer that is not serious. Someone who is not serious with God, if he tells you things are not working, you tell him, what did you ever engage? I mean, we, we watched you in, in all that laziness, no prayer, no nothing. But when a brother who has been a prayer warrior serving in church, when a sister who has been serving faithfully in church, two years, three years, no child, Four years, no child. Then she now gets pregnant. And everybody begins to rejoice. Then at the fifth or sixth month, she will lose the baby in a way that can cause a problem. Listen carefully. That impact, another believer will now say, my God, what is this? If you don't listen to what I'm telling you, a time will come you will not see the need to continue again. There are many believers who are sitting down, but they've left God since. They are just coming to church because they know if you don't see him in church, you say, I didn't see you here yesterday. But the truth is that their hearts are not with God again. They, they are not yet bold enough to go to a harvest, but you can be sure one leg is already coming out of the things of God. And that includes preachers. The frustration of fasting and praying for genuine spiritual power. Going around and emptying my accounts in need for impartation. Only to return back with nothing that shows I was called. The word of God has always brought forth light and life to the people. Jesus said, the word that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. I believe the word of God has come to you today as spirit and as life. I believe you have been mightily blessed. I would like you to follow us by clicking the notification bell so you will receive every notification on our updates and also stay updated through God's word. Share this video and also don't forget to subscribe. Thank you. God bless you.